First about your outlook. The outlook is positive. Flesh that out for us a little bit. Yeah, we're very positive on, on the copper market uh, generally and I think uh, the strength of the company on the back of uh, this first half also talks to you know, a good outlook uh, in terms of performance. We had a, a very good high quality set of results in the first half of the year. Our production is up 7%, sales are up 14%, costs are down 2% and all of this has enabled us to capture basically the increasing copper price which we had in the first half of the year. Uh, and obviously everybody's you know, glued to the price of iron ore, to copper, to zinc, this rally on the, uh, on the various commodities. Jeffrey sees the market going into a deficit, 2018, 2019, so I wanted you to take us forward. Are these prices sustainable, and do you see a deficit in 2018, 2019? Yeah, I think on, on the copper space, I mean, the outlook in, in emerging markets, and especially in China, is much more favourable. I think we're seeing sustained growth in copper demand, and this is linked to urbanisation and also to the move that China is doing to the consumer consumer economy which is much more intensive in copper when it comes down to electronics and appliances and the like and also I think we're seeing a very significant change uh, or disruption technology wise with electric uh, vehicles in the space of clean energy and mm. clean transport which is amazing. We'll come to that in just a moment because I want to talk to you about that and the potential there. Um, I think you said in, back in January that you weren't sure you saw much upside to the price so has your view changed since the start of this year in terms of where prices go for copper? I think we've, we've sustained a, an outlook for copper in the long term which has been favourable. What has happened is that that has probably come forward and, and because of the performance of the China economy and, and generally emerging markets and also because of the uh, uh, changes in, uh, in clean energy and clean transport which are, uh, you know, we were still understanding, but which are quite significant in terms of the impact that they can potentially have on copper demand. So that's changed your view this year? It has. Because and of what Europe's doing on electric vehicles? Yeah, that's an important part of the story. Also, I would say that on the supply side, we've seen copper being a commodity that's more constrained than it used to be. There has been strikes, you know, earlier this mm -hmm. year, export bans and the like, which means that it's more difficult to get new production into the market. And it's the combination of those two things that make our outlook for copper price better. I, you talk about the supply into the market. BHP Bill is in a $2.5 billion expansion in terms of their copper production. I just wonder, is this the risk to your sector? Is that that prices rise, there's a temptation to expand. We saw it happen previously in previous cycles in, the, in a whole variety of commodities. Is that one of the biggest risks to your market? And if not, what is? I mean, I would say that there's much more cautious today on capital allocation and on, on uh, investing in new greenfield projects. In, in our particular case in Antofagasta, the back you know, of our good performance has been productivity, cost improvements, and also a very disciplined approach to capital allocation. We will only do projects going forward which meet uh, uh, return criteria which perform under a wide range of copper prices and which makes sense under our portfolio. So I don't think that the, uh, you know, us in particular are going to be uh, persuaded by, you know, these prices to put money into big investments very quick. Can I just